A recent survey of more than 10,000 adults found that four in 10 Americans, that's 39%, believe we're living in the end times and that doomsday, as it appears to many, is coming. Yes, when Jesus returns, it will be doomsday for much of the world. But for genuine believers, it will be salvation as well as deliverance for Israel from Israel's many enemies. The Jerusalem Channel is made with the support of you, our viewers. Thank you for watching. Shalom, I'm Christine Darg. According to an amazingly lengthy article in the Mail Online, the world's biggest newspaper website, billionaires have been quietly building survival bunkers in remote locations. The article contained numerous diagrams and illustrations about bunkers in the end times. In uber-wealthy circles, it is quietly agreed that New Zealand is an ideal location to ride out Armageddon. Billionaires have been snatching up land there. In the event of a calamity, PayPal founder Peter Thiel and Silicon Valley entrepreneur Sam Altman said they agreed on a plan to escape to their properties in New Zealand, which is, of course, located at the far-flung end of the world. Technology writer Douglas Ruskoff described a secret meeting with five super wealthy men who asked how to better prepare their already elaborate doomsday bunkers. And now, a host of companies have sprung up to build bunkers to accommodate the world's wealthiest. But before dismissing all of this as yet another conspiracy theory, stay with me for a Bible prophecy update. I hear all the time many people denying that these are the end times, that events going on today are no different than any other time in history. And these Bible prophecy deniers believe everything is going to somehow just settle down and return to normal. But the Mail Online article underscored some of the reasons that at least 39% of Americans believe that these are indeed the end times and also some of the reasons that billionaires are planning their escape routes and bunkers to ride out the end of days. The article noted that the world is still reeling from the scars of the panic over the pandemic, also from storms attributed to climate change, lashing American coastlines and flooding inland cities, while ominously Russian President Vladimir Putin continues to talk of using nuclear weapons. So, will the world ever return to normal? Well, not in this dispensation, according to the Bible, but the world will become a glorious and safe place after the return of Jesus, when he triumphs over the globalists and sets up his millennial rule. Recently, I read an article by my Facebook friend, Jonathan Brittner, with which I'm in agreement that in spite of the long wait for Jesus to return, his appearing is imminent because of the myriad of signs warning everybody who will wake up that the Bible period called the Tribulation is on the horizon. Jonathan compiled a list of signs pointing to the reality that the world is rapidly running out of, quote, normal. So if you and your family members doubt that the rapture will happen anytime soon, please consider the number one sign of the end of the church age, which, of course, I've often pointed out, and that's Israel's miraculous rebirth as a nation. Since the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem and the scattering of the Jewish people into the diaspora, no other generation has witnessed the resurrection of what I call the Lazarus nation, the people of Israel. Over 250 years before it happened, Sir Isaac Newton had predicted that Israel would reappear as a nation. And how did he know? Sir Isaac Newton based his conclusions upon his study of the books of Daniel and Revelation. 
Newton correctly recognized that the fulfillment of biblical end times prophecies requires Israel's renewed existence. So if you are a well-versed Bible believer, but you're having trouble convincing your family and friends that they should prepare for the second coming of Jesus, please don't forget to tell them that Israel's remarkable rebirth makes our generation different than any other time prior to May the 14th, 1948, when Israel became a nation again miraculously in one day. In previous broadcasts, I've already mentioned some of the other signs that were highlighted by Jonathan Brittner in his article, indicating that normalcy is running out. Signs such as the push toward rebuilding a third temple in Jerusalem and the fact that the Israeli government is constructing a train service that will run Jewish pilgrims directly from the airport to the Temple Mount. These prophetic developments make our time very different indeed from previous generations. Other signs that indicate we're not returning to normal are the various technologies for tracking, marking, and identification of individuals that will greatly restrict freedoms on a local, international, and global level. At the November 2022 meeting of the G20 nations in Indonesia, leaders of the world's largest economies agreed to work together to implement a digital health passport that will begin by tracking everyone's medical status, a step necessary for control that the future world dictator called the Antichrist will demand during the tribulation period that's described in the book of Revelation and also in the book of Daniel. The technological system of the future dictator called the Antichrist in the Bible will recognize whether a person has submitted to his mark in order to engage in commerce. Apparently, the steps leading up to this tyranny will be first to eliminate cash through a worldwide digital currency, then combine online identity for banking with a digital health passport. These steps are already being implemented in China. So do we need to be reminded that artificial intelligence technology, along with the development of gigantic computer databases, makes our generation unique from any other previous time in history? Technical innovations not only make the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 13 and verses 16 and 18 possible concerning the so-called mark of the beast, but also increasingly likely when one considers the agenda of the globalists. We may wonder, how will the future Antichrist, known in Scripture as the man of lawlessness, exercise complete control over the earth's population? such as is envisioned in Revelation chapter 13 and elsewhere in Scripture? The answer is transhumanism. Transhumanism is the trend to combine humans with machines so that people will not be fully human and thus not redeemable. And transhumanism is not only a step that the Antichrist will need, but it's also a high priority of the World Economic Forum and all world leaders who are now committed to the so-called Great Reset. The Great Reset is the economic recovery plan drawn up by the World Economic Forum in response to the pandemic. You see, transhumanism will be necessary for controlling people in the future short kingdom of the Antichrist. Both the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation predict that a worldwide government will exist for a short time under the rule of Antichrist. It's no coincidence that the UN's Agenda 2030 is all about establishing a global governance by 2030, if not well before that year. Jonathan Brittner wrote that the rapidly forming one world government only remains a secret to those who don't want to believe that it's happening. But for those whose eyes are open, the stage is also being fully prepared for a one-world religion. It would have been hard to miss recent reports of religious leaders from all over the world who reenacted in Egypt the giving of the Ten Commandments. But, of course, their Ten Commandments 
concern environmentalism and climate change, bringing together many diverse faiths as they worshiped the creation rather than the creator. Well, is there good news? Yes, of course. The good news is that the glorious new normal that Jesus will bring will last into eternity. But we have to decide now whom we will serve. The people of Noah's day were leading completely normal lives. The Bible says everyone was eating, drinking, getting married, and giving their children in marriage. And not one of them, except Noah and his family, was prepared for the cataclysmic flood that was unleashed upon them. By the time they recognized their doom, it was far too late. And that is, unfortunately, what is happening in our age. People are craving a sense of normality. But normality also tends to foster a false sense of security, which makes people put off seeking the Lord. We generally need pressure to seek the Lord. The Lord Jesus does know who really belongs to him. He knows who are his sheep. And he knows the lawless ones that the Bible refers to as goats. What distinguishes the sheep from the goats in the Bible is the acceptance or rejection of Jesus' gospel message. His parable of the sheep and goats is found in Matthew chapter 25 and verses 31 to 46. In this parable, Jesus uses the example of a shepherd who separates his sheep from his goats in order to help his followers understand what judgment will be like. The sheep, of course, are the followers of Jesus, while the goats choose not to follow the Lord. The parable is based on the differences in behavior between sheep and goats. Sheep are gentle, quiet, innocent animals, and Jesus describes the individuals with sheep-like quality as those who take care of people who are hungry, thirsty, in need of clothing and shelter, and sick and imprisoned. Jesus differentiates between the positive and negative qualities of humanity and how judgment someday will occur. The sheep, his followers, have positive qualities. Goats, those who don't follow the Lord, of course, have negative characteristics. And as a person studies this parable, they would undoubtedly want to be associated with the qualities of sheep and not the goats. Well, in other end-time news, I'm sure you've noticed how there's been a breakdown in civility ever since God and the Ten Commandments and prayer have been thrown out of schools and so forth. Fist fights used to break out in places like bars, but now they're breaking out everywhere, on airplanes and fast food lines and in family amusement parks. A Christian leader has blasted the Biden administration for creating an atmosphere of lawlessness by ignoring attacks on churches and houses of worship nationwide, which have nearly tripled over the last four years. This is according to a startling new report published by the Family Research Council. According to its president, Tony Perkins, the extent of the documented attacks on Christian churches inspires sorrow, but it's no surprise. As a former chairman of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, Perkins has seen the warning signs gathering like clouds across the Atlantic. And as the mainstream culture moves further and further away from a biblical worldview, Perkins said he has witnessed hostility to moral truth creep over American shores. The West, once the safe haven of free speech and religion, is turning cold to religious foundations that have helped the nation to thrive and survive. Perkins charges that Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are turning a blind eye to attacks on churches, stretching from sea to shining sea in America, not to fail to mention the increase on attacks on synagogues. Perkins stated that the Biden Department of Justice has so far largely ignored the growing attacks on churches and their failure to confront the problem, he says, is creating an environment of lawlessness around the country. The assaults on churches in the newly published 84-page report covered every region of the country and every denominational background. 
and often resulting from pro-abortion terrorism or other forms of left-wing enmity against biblical morality. According to the copiously documented report, in the past four years, criminals have committed at least 420 acts of hostility against American churches. The list includes everything from arson and gun-related violence to vandalism and bomb threats. The attacks show the comprehensive nature of anti-Christian violence. A disturbing fact is that assaults against churches have occurred across the board in 45 states and also in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Victimized congregations span the theological gamut, including evangelical, Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, mainland Protestant, non-denominational churches, as well as Seventh-day Adventists. Assailants targeted parishes attended by white, black, and Asian Christians, specifically Korean and Taiwanese, as well as multi-ethnic congregations. Vandals smashed crosses, statues, and headstones in cemeteries, vandalized carvings of the Ten Commandments, set fire to a nativity scene, and did unspeakable things to a statue of the Virgin Mary. Smashed windows and spray-painted doors have become ubiquitous, and each act of violence or vandalism has resulted in untold numbers of dollars in damage to local congregations. The report, which again was conducted by the Center for Religious Liberty at the Family Research Council, found that these destructive, often violent assaults against houses of worship are often precipitated by political upheaval, typically on the left. Much of the vandalism is the result of resentment and hatred against Christianity's 2,000-year-old history of opposition to abortion. In the first nine months of 2022, pro-abortion extremists carried out at least 57 attacks against Christian houses of worship, and that is an increase of 1,140% over the past four years. Furthermore, vandals covered a Roman Catholic church and school in Michigan with satanic symbols and messages calling for the death of Republicans. The same week, protesters spray-painted pro-abortion messages on the doors of a Catholic church in Houston, Texas, and interrupted a mass in Los Angeles, dressed as characters out of The Handmaid's Tale. Christian churches have also been attacked due to biblical morality about sexual relations and transgenderism. The report noted multiple incidents involving swastikas and Nazism. Other assaults were seemingly anti-human. For example, vandals defaced a Catholic parish in the state of New Jersey with the words defenestrate babies, which means, according to the definition of defenestrate, the vandals were advocating throwing innocent babies out of windows. Chilling. Some lawless Americans threaten to go on a shooting spree if their right to murder babies in the womb is denied. Mercifully, a vandal who destroyed $100,000 of church property at the Central Baptist Church in Conway, Arkansas, repented and was baptized in 2019. The former perpetrator was welcomed into the family of God. But unfortunately, the vast majority of offenders are uncaught, unpunished, and unrepentant. Leftists and radicals always claim that only if the Bible is thrown out the window can everyone be treated with equality and respect. But as colonist Melanie Phillips has stated, equal respect was in fact invented by the Hebrew Bible and is absolutely central to Judaism, out of which, of course, Christianity began. The problem is that the left confuses equal respect with identical treatment and outcomes, which they call non-discrimination. But far from creating a liberal, tolerant society, leftist ideologies are profoundly illiberal and coercive. Also far from producing the brotherhood of mankind, left-wing universalism sets group against group in a battle for power over each other. Well, 
What did Jesus tell us in Matthew 24 in his end time briefing on the Mount of Olives? Jesus, Yeshua, prophesied. And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. Increased lawlessness and a lack of love, cold hearts, are a sure sign of the end times. In the Bible, in contrast to righteousness or good deeds, the Greek word anomia is usually translated as lawless or iniquity, meaning deliberately going against God's moral standards. The truth is, as the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 3.13, evil people will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. And with the increase in lawlessness, there will be no new normal until Jesus returns. The Bible predicts that lawlessness will increase and then complete anarchy will hold sway. The book of Revelation predicts that under the Antichrist, the reign of terror and anarchy will be much worse than all of history's previous revolutions. The Lord's prediction of lawlessness parallels Paul's description in 2 Thessalonians 2.3 of the future Antichrist as a man of lawlessness, the son of destruction, who will oppose and exalt himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he will take his seat in the holy place, the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Theologians tell us it is this abounding of lawlessness which gives to Antichrist his power both against the Jewish people and the temple in the last days. Bible commentators, eschatologists, are in agreement that there will be a rapid and exponential increase in lawlessness. In other words, lawlessness is not going to just increase. It will multiply, reaching the highest levels in all of human history. By definition, the lawless person is motivated by personal, selfish concerns not by any regard for others or for the rules that govern society with one another. So with the upsurge of lawlessness, there is a cooling off of love. And such an environment paves the way for the man of lawlessness to set up his abominable image in God's future temple in Jerusalem, to desecrate it. Jesus warned of it, and so did the prophet Daniel. We do these broadcasts because we want you to understand the times and to be prepared for the Lord's imminent return. There are many who are missing the blessing and peace of believing in the blessed hope, the rapture, because they argue that the word rapture is not found in the Bible. And I've dealt with this many times in previous programs. But be assured, the doctrine of the rapture is definitely found uh, embedded within the pages of this Bible. And Paul gave to the church of Thessalonica the crown jewel of Bible prophecy in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. He said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, Paul said, comfort one another with these words. So I encourage you to keep seeking the face of the Lord. It may seem like you are alone, like you're just one of a few people attempting to live for the Lord in these dangerous days. But don't forget the beautiful promise of Jesus, our heavenly bridegroom, who promised in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me, because in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, Jesus said, but I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So if you don't know this wonderful prophecy fulfilling Jesus the Messiah, we invite you to come to him. Invite him into your heart. It's that simple. You may open your heart and say, Lord, I need salvation. I need my sins to be forgiven. I want to receive you, Lord. I want to be like that Roman centurion who stood by the cross and watched the Savior give his life's blood. 
After watching him, that centurion had to admit, truly, this was the Son of God. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us, for all of our sins. And I want you to know, the Holy Spirit is always present to hear our confessions. And so, would you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and come personally to live within your heart, in your spirit? When you do, he will resurrect your dead spirit out of sin, and you will become alive with God's eternal life and love. You'll be born again into a brand new living. One, you'll be one with God's Holy Spirit. Then you will be eternally saved, for you will experience God's salvation and love coming into your now alive spirit from your eternal Heavenly Father. And you will begin to do the will of our Father, which is an ongoing end time prophetic work of the Holy Spirit to do exploits for him in these last days. When Jesus returns, and I believe it's going to be sooner rather than later, he will rule the world from Jerusalem for a thousand years and you will be a part of his kingship. This is what the New Testament teaches. And I believe the Jewish people in Israel will acknowledge at that time that Jesus is indeed Messiah when he rules. And so out of Zion, the law shall go forth and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Amen. I hope you can see how important it is to be prayed up and to be watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem at this very strategic time. And so I want to keep in touch and draw your attention to our website, exploits.tv, continually reporting on Bible prophecy and end time events relating to the church in Israel. We invite you to sign up for our Electronic Exploits News at our website. And we have uploaded a library of videos available 24-7 at our website and our Jerusalem Channel app, as well as our Jerusalem Channel YouTube site. And in the meantime, Daniel 11.32 declares, the people who know their God will be strong, not weak, and will do exploits, meaning will accomplish the works of the Lord before his imminent return. Have any questions? Feel free to contact me on social media. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Until next time, I'll always be contending for the faith and praying earnestly for the peace of Jerusalem. Shalom. I'm Christine Dark. Maranatha. <laughs>